All right, welcome to our webinar. My name is Danielle, and I am the facilitator for our webinar today. I am with the VU Senior Living of Cedar Rapids. I'm the assistant director here. We have to give our special thank you to our caregivers and administrators at our Views of Marion location for making this happen today. The Views of Marion opened in June 2019 and is our first location with a full continuum of care under one roof. Our Marion location is uniquely built with high building standards with our residents and employees' health and well being in mind. So take note of our email here info at viewsseniorliving.com. In case you are disconnected for any reason, we'll send out an email after the webinar to connect and are happy to answer any further questions that you may have. As we move on, please take a moment to find the chat button at the bottom of your screen. We would love to know where you are joining us from. Let us know in the chat down below. We're also happy you are here and free feel, feel free to ask any questions in that chat system down there and we'll answer either during or at the end of the presentation. Now I'd like to introduce our presenters before we begin. Michelle is our community relations director at the Views of Marion. She has worked in the senior living industry since 2009 and enjoys working with families. She is passionate about what she does and was our first employee at the Views of Marion. Morgan is our executive director at the Views of Marion. She has been with, been a licensed nursing home administrator for four years and a licensed nurse for 16 years with an emphasis in geriatric care. Thank you, Danielle. Uh, my name is Morgan. And today we wanted to talk to you a little bit about understanding different levels of care. We appreciate you joining us on your lunch hour today and taking that time. Um, an overview of our presentation today, we're gonna talk about the types of care that are provided in senior living, the services that can be provided with each level of care. We're gonna talk about when it's time to transition to the next level of care and how levels of care are not always one size fits all. So first, the types of care that are provided in senior living are independent living, assisted living, assisted living memory care, skilled nursing and rehabilitation, and long-term care. Let's talk about independent living. Independent living is much like living in an apartment building. There are limited services, um, such as one meal provided per day or bi-weekly housekeeping. Residents are completely independent in all their activities of daily living. Independent living facilities are not licensed to provide emergency care. Um, there are planned community events that are offered to residents to help them um, stay social and meet other people. There are also maintenance-free communities, meaning the communities provide lawn care, snow removal, maintenance repairs, and, and those types of things. Um, assisted living, uh, Ridgeview, our, our assisted living is Ridgeview of Marion. It's also similar to living in an apartment building. The menu of services uh, gets a little bigger in assisted living. Three meals a day are offered weekly housekeeping and laundry, and then some routine medical care. Uh, residents usually require help from staff with some activities of daily living. Some of those things are medication administration, help with dressing, bathing, and sometimes reminders for meals. There's a staff member available 24 hours a day, seven days a week in our assisted living. There are planned community events for the residents to attend to help keep them social and meet other people. And it is also a maintenance-free type of living with snow removal, lawn care, and maintenance repairs provided. Here are a few pictures that highlight our spacious assisted living apartments. Our next level of care is memory care assisted living, and we call ours Meadowview of Marion. This is a lower stimulus environment with more structure. 
There's a secure door system for resident safety. Most residents require help from staff with some activities of daily living. And those activities include medication administration, dressing, bathing, meal reminders, et cetera. There is increased staffing in this level of care. And that includes help from an LPN 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Our emphasis in Meadowview of Marion is on engaging activity opportunities for the residents. We feel that this reduces some of the negative behaviors that can sometimes accompany dementia diagnosis. We train our staff um, with annual dementia training to help them understand those that they're caring for a little bit better. Here's a few pictures of our beautiful memory care community. Our next level of care is skilled nursing and rehabilitation, which we call Oakview of Marion. The residents in this level of care are usually dependent for multiple needs. Many of them have complex medical issues that require 24 hour nursing oversight. We have a medical director on staff who works cooperatively with management and nursing to ensure the highest quality of care. Every day we have a registered nurse at least eight hours of the day. We plan enriching activities for those residents um, so that they can get the most out of their stay here when they're skilled. The emphasis is on rehabilitation after hospitalization with many times the goal being to return home. We also have a registered dietitian contracted and she monitors the nutritional needs of those residents weekly. In our Oak View of Marion, there is also long-term care. It's very similar to skilled care with just a few uh, differences. There is therapy available, um, and that's usually something that we see when a resident shows a decline, um, and that can be anywhere in, in physical activity or even mental um, cognitive needs. And beyond that, there are the same things offered in the long-term care as there were in the skilled nursing. So sometimes we hear from our families how hard it is to know when it is time to make the transition to the next level of care. And even as caregivers, it can be difficult for us to know when that time is. But here are some of the things that we look for as signs of when that time is near. The first can be cognitive decline. If a person is showing more trouble with memory or decision-making, we usually see that as a time that maybe they need a little more help. Decreased mobility is also a sign of needing more help with needs on a day-to-day -day basis. Increased incontinence can sometimes show caregivers that they, the person is needing a little more help. When a person needs skilled therapy, that's obviously a time to transition them. If a person becomes a wandering risk um, and is maybe seeking exits and doesn't understand the need for more safety, that is a time to transition to another level of care. If a person is falling more often and is a risk to their own safety because of those falls, sometimes we need to transition them to another level of care. Anytime a person has increased acute medical needs, that would be also a time that we're looking at a higher level of care for that person. Morgan, we had a question in the chat, I of believe re related to um, this topic. And okay. the question is one registered nurse for how many patients? So when we say one registered nurse, what that means is that there's one here at least eight hours of the day. There are two nurses here from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day. And what we mean by the one registered nurse is that that's always at least going to be a one registered nurse during that time period. The other one is usually a licensed practical nurse, but that also varies. And then overnight, we have a registered nurse here as well with the patient. So I'd say usually it's one nurse to about 18 to 20 residents at any given time. And Lori, if you have any more questions, you're welcome to unmute. Absolutely. And ask. Just yeah. send those right in, Lori. Yep. Or just drop them in the chat and we can keep asking. So Yes. 
We also have our management nurses here Monday through Friday, and there's three of them, and they are all registered nurses. So, and we we don't even count their hours toward that average because we know they they have other things that they're doing, but it is nice because they can fill in and help with some of those acute needs or assessments when needed. Good question. The next slide talks about how levels of care are not one size fits all. Um, in our two years of being open, we've seen this quite a bit and we, we like to explain this because a lot of times people wanna put care into a box and say, this is what this level of care means. Well, that's not always the case. And a lot of that's because each residence, their needs are unique and they're never, you never have two residents the same. One person may um, have you know, a, this list of needs, but then have something else that makes them maybe not appropriate for a certain level of care. Um, so we like to look at the, the whole resident before making that decision on levels of care. Residents are also inconsistent. We have, we've had residents who they'll do great three or four days in a row and we'll think, okay, they're ready to move over to assisted living. But then maybe they have two poor days in a row where they're less mobile or their cognitive um, function is declined. And, and then they have a couple of more good days. So when we see that inconsistency, the last thing we wanna do is move them to a lower level of care and then have them fail. So we try to take that inconsistency into account. Higher level of care can sometimes provide more peace of mind. So we have had instances where families say, or, or even a resident say, I like knowing I have that extra staff around. So while I may be okay in assisted living, I'd rather live in long-term because I like knowing that there are five people on staff on my hallway at a time. And that's okay. We don't say, well, no, you can't do that just because they meet all these other criteria. If the peace of mind makes them feel more safe, that's what we're here for. So um, that's another time when it doesn't fit everybody. Um, sometimes people also opt for a higher level of care because they want to avoid making multiple moves. They know that the future could bring a move to, um, you know, maybe one or two other levels of care. And they think, let's just move once and be done with it. And that's their prerogative. And we allow that as well. So as you know, long-term care costs can, can be costly. So we thought we'd take a moment to give you a snapshot of our monthly fees here at the Views of Marion. So the first um, example is our assisted living and it can start at 4,025. This would be for one person in a one bedroom apartment at our entry level of care, of care level one. We do have four levels of care and they range from 400, 500, 600 and 700. So the most that one person would be spending in a one bedroom apartment would be 4,325. Now in a two bedroom apartment, our fees start at 4,550. And then again, depending on levels of care, it can range from 400 to $700, which would then um, take it up to almost 5,300 for one person in a two bedroom. And then we do have second person fees of 1,000. And we can explain those fees if you want to come in and tour and, and all of that. But it's just nice to have those figures um, in advance. So you can almost predict what your future health care costs are going to be when starting here at the Views of Marion. Because you may come here, you know, not needing a lot of service, but having that peace of mind of knowing that it's here and then what those future costs can be can help avoid stress in the future. Our memory care for a studio apartment is 6,300 a month. Now this fee is pretty much all inclusive. The only thing it doesn't cover is their toiletries, but for the most part, everything's covered under the 6,300. And then of course we have our long-term care, which is actually 275 a day um, and an estimated fee of $8,250. So um, sometimes though, Morgan mentioned if they come here on a rehab stay, the rehabilitation and therapy can be covered under Medicare. So um, a lot of times Medicare will cover their stay during those times. 
but for long term, it would end up being a private pay daily rate of 275. We just wanted to give you that so you, you could just get an idea of what it costs here at the views. Um, obviously, there's more communities here in this greater Cedar Rapids area that you could compare us to. And then um, it just helps avoid the stress. We'll go ahead into the next slide is that we do encourage you to research your options. Um, you know, finding a community that has all levels of care is great because like here at the Views of Marion, uh, our residents become familiar with our staff. And then like Morgan had mentioned, you know, we can avoid future moves, um, not only within the building, but ha had you gone to another community, you might have to end up picking another facility at the end of, life when you're needing that higher level of care. So um, just keep those things in mind when you're planning. And the Views of Marion is, is very fortunate to have all of that here under one roof. We've also been serving our Cedar Rapids community for over 15 years and our owners um, take great pride in um, you know, keeping that service, not only in our Cedar Rapids area, but here in Marion. And we'd like to take a moment to open this up for questions and answers. Um, now that we've finished our presentation, we're, we're here to help if you have additional questions. I don't see any in the chat, but if any of you wanna unmute, you're welcome to speak. Um, I do have one question, actually, uh, related to your pricing. Um, if a person is shopping and um, you're looking at those tiers, like those extras, are the do the communities price similarly, like with all a cart type stuff, or are the structures similar, or will they find a lot of different structures as far as how those different levels are? That's priced? a great question, Karen. Um, yes, definitely uh, ask those questions when you're touring. Ours are pretty straightforward. We also have a, a document that breaks down a point system so you can kind of see um, what each level of care um, would, would mean. So like, for example, if they need help with bathing um, or dressing, that could be a care level or medications. Some communities charge by the amount of time um, so you'll want to ask that they might give you a tier, but it only maybe includes a certain amount of time. And then as you need more help, of course, those fees can go up. So that makes it harder to predict what your monthly fee would be. Whereas here at the views, you can predict, um, the highest level of care at $700. Um, or if, you know, you feel like you might need a different level of care, there are Pricing is very straightforward with our memory care and our long-term care. Okay, cool. I just feel like that could probably be an overwhelming part of researching. So I thought it that would is. be good to know. So you probably know a lot about that. Okay. Okay, let's see. Uh, so Suzanne asks, when you indicate the monthly price, I assume that is all-inclusive meals, et cetera. That's correct. That's right and housekeeping and laundry. A lot of times that's extra at some communities. So you'll wanna ask those questions. Oh yeah, very good. That was my burning question. Any mm -hmm. other questions out there? Okay. We do also include cable and internet. Yeah. Du Duane looks like he has a question. Hey, there we go. <laughs> Finally got unmuted here. Um, uh, I realize you're focused more on the views of Marion, and there may there are a few differences between Marion and Cedar Rapids. I guess I'm I'm curious about the uh, different levels of the the service fee levels within the assisted living. You know, the level zero, one, two, three. Uh, 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 Danielle, I've got your your hand out there, so I guess I'm just curious. Uh, of uh, where we go from level to one to level two and so forth and how that works. So both of our, um, between Marion and Cedar Rapids, our levels are very similar. Um, 
So it's based on a point system. So you could fall between like 14 to 19 points is like, I have to look back at it, it was like a level one. Um, so that's how we score, like if you need help with bathing, continence management, medications is how many points you score. Um, and you're, you wouldn't be like stuck at that level. You could say you went to the hospital for a short stay and you need help for a little bit. Um, and then with therapy services, you're, you're improving and getting better. You can always drop back down to like a level one. So you're not permanently stuck there, which is nice. That's a great okay. I think that's the only question I had at this point. Thank you, Danielle. I may have some more sp specific things uh, for you later on, but uh, we'll I talk later. Done. Yeah. And someone was asking if we'd have a recording in available and we will. Um, so we can put that up and send a link out probably by the end of the week. So if you missed anything. Um, we do have some fault. We will send up a follow-up email as well. So um, if you have any questions, you can reply to that email too. If you, if you have like a bright idea, come right after we get off. <laughs> so. What happens when a, a person runs out of money? Boot and you're out. <laughs> okay. so, uh, if that's okay, I'll answer yeah. that. So when a person admits here, we do ask some financial questions and we ask about amount of finances so that that way we do have a good idea of when that person might get down to, you know, a year's worth of, of money left to pay. What we usually would do at that point is we would try to help them find a facility that does accept Medicaid and then try to get them there before their money runs out because their choices will be better for Medicaid facilities. If they still have a year's worth or six months worth left to spend before they have to do the Medicaid application. Sometimes we even help with that Medicaid application or at least getting that paperwork in line to do it. Samantha, my director of nursing, she has background with that and she's very good at finding those resources and has done that multiple times. So she knows all the ins and outs to that because it's a very complicated process, but we make sure that we get in front of that early so that we give that person the best options possible. Down the road, I don't know if we will accept Medicaid. Um, that's something that has been discussed, but I don't think a decision has been made yet. I know that right now we don't. Um, it's hard for Michelle and I both to turn people away, period. So my hope is that someday we can, but um, I know that right now there is not a plan to. So in the meantime, we will just try to help find people find the best place for them that meets their financial needs. Is Cedar Rapids any different? Yeah, we, so we do accept med, Medicaid elderly waiver over here, but I mean, We've been open for 15 years too, so okay. um, that makes a that makes a difference. But yeah, we can but we can only accept so many people over here. So I think it's up to five people between our memory care and assisted living. Okay, thank for those you. Who have served our country? Um, there is a veterans aid and attendance program that also can help offset our costs. Um, and sometimes people aren't aware that the, it does cover the spouse uh, of this um, veteran. So we can provide you information on that too, if, if that helps. We have developed relationships with a few of the um, facilities here in Marion that do accept Medicaid so that we can find the best fit because what might fit one person may not fit another or a family might be looking for something different um, than what another is looking for. So we've, we've really tried to build those relationships so that we can give people as many options as possible when that time comes. Thank you. Questions, guys? Anyone else? Um, I have one more question. Can you hear me? Yep, we can um, hear you. Okay, good. Um, I know I started looking at this 
for my mother a few years ago when you were opening in Marion. And I didn't know you had something in Cedar Rapids. So is that relatively new? Did you move into Cedar Rapids recently? I was just looking at the website. Um, and is it independent and assisted living in Cedar Rapids? Um, so Cedar Rapids is the was the original location. Um, we also have a location in Burlington and then Marion. Okay. So um, at our Burlington location, it's long-term care, skilled nursing and assisted living. Marion has the full continuum of care and then Cedar Rapids is assisted living and memory care. Okay, it's on F Avenue. I'm just trying to figure out where this is, okay. Well, one thing that might've confused you is that um, they're um, known as Ridgeview and Meadowview. Mm -hmm. And then when we opened our Marion location, we became the View Senior Living so that might be why um, I, I don't, see Ridgeview or Meadowview sounds more familiar to you. Uh, okay. I will that uh, yeah, that, that's helpful. I'm trying to remember where my mother stayed temporarily. Yeah. So okay. I know it was on F Avenue across yep. from T and um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. Hey, anyone else? All right, silence speaks. <laughs> I think I think with that, we can probably conclude our meeting. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. And Thank again, you. look for that email. Yeah, we'll send you a follow-up. <laughs> thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye All now. right, thanks. Bye. Bye.